Welcome everybody to Meet the Fritz Trainer, this time with me, Jan Marcos Grandmaster, who made a new Fritz Trainer, and we're very excited for this. Thank you for your time, Jan. Thank you much for inviting me, and uh, thank you all for watching. <laughs> Jan, you have made a new Fritz Trainer, which is coming out tomorrow. So, um, yeah, it's a little bit of a secret, but now you can give a tiny sneak peek or tell us a little bit what is this Fritz Trainer about, because it is a bit special after all. Yeah, um, I really like the chess middle, ga middle game. Yeah, I never was very good in openings or end games, but I am really interested in this uh, rich universe of chess middle game. And I have decided to create like a series of five uh, Fritz trainers and each volume will be dedicated to one piece. How do they behave in the middle game? Yeah, because normally we tend to uh, analyze some typical kinds of positions or maybe some tactical, uh, um, tactical motives or so. But I don't remember seeing uh, something similar before. Yeah, so for example, uh, a full uh, course or full DVD dedicated to rooks or to queens, mm -hmm. which are actually the two topics which are coming out tomorrow: the queens and the rooks. Nice, excellent. Looking forward to this. Yeah, middle game is just. I thought end games was one of the most uh, difficult things to learn, but uh, I come to the realization that middle games might even take the trophy at points at some point so yeah it's good it's good well, to learn my, some stuff my about experience this. as a coach is that my pupils uh, spend much more time in middle games mm. naturally but they also enjoy them more mm. Yeah, mm. because of uh, the, uh, the 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 time um, uh, which is allocated to both players at the beginning you don't get so much time in the end games so most of the thinking and the decisions really do appear in the middle games these days Let's talk about yourself for a little bit because uh, there's much, much more going on than only chess. And you would think that you're a grandmaster, you've reached even a rating of 2,600, you're or at, at 2,500 something at the moment. So you would think like, okay, this is, this is the thing which you dedicated to, but there's much more. There is, uh, you've written, let's start with books. You've written tons of books. Um, can you give a little insight of what kind of books you've written? Well, obviously, I have written uh, several chess books. Uh, two of them uh, were uh, quite nicely acclaimed. Uh, I'm proud of that, so I will just tell. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the under the surface uh, was the English Chess Federation Book of the Year and uh, the Secret Ingredient, which was co-authored with uh, David Navarra. Uh, was the FIDE um, Book of the Year 2022. Mm -hmm. So that uh, that is something what I uh, find uh, like for myself more important and I'm more proud of it than like any of my chess wins, for example. Um, but there are also non-chess books. I'm writing uh, on uh, critical thinking and moral dilemmas and uh, the relationship between science and phenomenology and all this stuff. Uh, these subjects may seem to be like, uh, you know, uh, otherworldly or uh, difficult, but they are touching our everyday life, of course. Yeah, for example, the the way how we uh, think about science uh, is closely uh, linked to how many people get vaccinated, for example, <laughs> for COVID. Yeah, or uh, moral dilemmas. They often they, they they are in our everyday lives more often than we expect. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I like these subjects because they are like uh, complicated enough for a chess player, but at the same time they are like um, um, nice and everyday topics that actually uh, yeah are approachable to many. So that are the books, and yeah, they are mostly in Slovak and Czech and so, but yeah, they they are quite well welcomed as well, so I'm happy about that. Absolutely. I think it also plays a big role in the chess after all. I guess uh, sometimes um, it even uh, goes hand in hand with like when you're on a chess board and you have a very important or difficult uh, position which you have to solve, that's a dilemma of what to choose, which direction to go for in something like this. Did uh, any of this help you in your chess career, your knowledge about uh, the philosophy and those dilemmas? Uh, well, 
Yes and no, I would mm -hmm. say. Yeah. Uh, the chess career has helped me, for example, to uh, to create some courses for for companies about, for example, the decision making and so on, because that's also something I'm I'm doing quite quite a lot, uh, lecturing uh, to to companies and NGOs and so on. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but the my my like philosophical background has helped me mostly in my chess writing. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's full of metaphors and. Uh, you know different ways how to how to speak about chess. Uh, hopefully, also some unique ones. And uh, I could uh, write in this way only because I have this philosophical background. Hmm. You learned chess according to Wikipedia, and correct me if I'm wrong with this. But uh, your Chester uh, sister, <laughs> Chester, Chester, your sister That's taught chess you sister, chess. Right? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> she taught uh, chess to you. Is she uh, herself? Was it just a hobby for her, or is she also in? Uh, is this something no, professional? No, no it was no. just my, my, just my sister is into languages. Uh -huh. She speaks many languages, and she uh, she has a proper job. <laughs> 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 so gotcha. nothing nothing connected to chess. Uh, but okay, well, she never played actually. Yeah, it, it was just uh, more or less coincidence that she has uh, told me to. But maybe maybe she, it was her who actually uh, created the Wikipedia. Uh, page, so. <laughs> I can see her she, fingers there. So yeah, because it's very interesting. She wanted to be part of this too. Yeah, <laughs> but after all, this uh, lit a spark for you, and this was when you also had some success in the early years, I guess, with chess. And then you stuck with it. Why did you stick with chess? What was the thing where you thought, like, this is one thing which I want to, which should be part of my life forever? Yeah, uh, I'm not very competitive, but I really like thinking. Yeah. Hmm. So I was always amazed by the depth of chess and the the the, the problems that uh, are arising. And up to uh, up to the to the day, I I don't care too much whether I'm two five fifty or two six twenty or whatever. Uh, uh, but uh, what I do care about a lot is really when something interesting happens, some some interesting in, uh, ideas appear. Mm -hmm. So for me. Uh, like a chess game is more than um, uh, it's not a fight, but actually more some kind of uh, interview with the other person. Yeah, you have your ideas, I have my ideas. Let's speak about them. Yeah, and that's what happens actually uh, after the game in the analysis. So yeah, that's yeah. what I like. The depth. Uh, that's what interests me in chess. How come you understand thinking so much, and what made you think? Was it uh, your parents, or did, was something in your life occurring where you were just, or were you always a thinker after all? I probably was. Yeah, <laughs> my, my parents are scientists, and uh, yeah, um, they used to speak to us a lot about everything when mm -hmm. we were very young. Mm -hmm. So maybe that helped. Yeah, they're also thinkers, so. We were speaking about everything from the very early age. So yeah, when you get a lot of inputs as as a child, then uh, it sticks with you. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm trying to do with my kids as well. Yes, your kids too. And uh, now, one thing I also want to know is what, uh, how do the next couple of years uh, look for you? Do you have any plans, or are normally things happening as they come and go? Uh, well. Uh, uh, it's always difficult to make plans because the life uh, usually uh, chooses otherwise. But mm -hmm. uh, I would like to write books, mostly non-chess perhaps, but maybe one or two chess books might might be there. And then later on, I would like to uh, maybe uh, join some academic field or I don't know, you know some some program for students or so. Because like writing books is nice, but also the uh, the the community is quite important for me. So uh, once the kids grow older, I, I I think I will have more time to dedicate to students. And so mm -hmm. uh, because I I really um, believe in in the Socratic dialogue and the the ability to meet someone one one to one or in a small group in an informal environment. I think this is where the most interesting changes in. Uh, of the world or in uh, human lives uh, actually happen. So so I would like to experience that. Now, besides the Fritz trainer, you're actually also doing a couple of more things for chess space. What are they in particular? 
yes, I, I enjoy the cooperation with Chessbase very much. Uh, and uh, I have a series of articles, which is uh, called The Winning Academy. It's about the practical aspects of, of, of uh, playing chess and about the over-the-board decisions and so on. Oh. Uh, we have like uh, 20 articles out now, so that's quite a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, and I also uh, am uh, creating videos for the Chessbase magazine. So if you buy a Chessbase magazine, I will probably uh, pop out uh, of <laughs> the volume somewhere. <laughs> Wonderful, excellent. Thank you, Jan. Um, now we will take a look at uh, some interesting chess game or position, something you've prepared for us. So we yeah get to learn something too. So what do we have here on the board? Yeah, uh, Anna, look, uh, this is my position uh, from the game with Jan Gustafsson. So two Jans <laughs> were playing at the moment. <laughs> it's wide to move. Uh, it was move 35. So we had like five moves still the time control. Mm -hmm. It was rather tense. Um, and I've picked up this position because, um, yeah, the 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 DVD uh, the, the courses uh, will be about, the freestanding courses will be about pieces. And I wanted to show you how uh, here the white knight will be dominating the black bishop. Yeah, okay. It's a, will be a very, very interesting thing. Um, I'm using this position. I'm not giving an entire game, but I'm using this position to my with my pupils quite a lot because black actually has got several interesting options where he might try to, you know, get off uh, cheaply here. <laughs> uh, so what would you try as black? What what do you think black wants to do? Well, I, just... I would look at the e3 pawn for a second. I would also try to uh, get the king in a better position and try to maybe swap the rook. That's exactly. two, two if, options I have, yeah. Mm -hmm, very good, yeah. If black is able to play bishop g5 and, for example, take on h6, that would be lovely for him, mm -hmm. yeah. And also, uh, if black was able to go rook d8 and exchange the rooks, that would be also nice. So I was looking for something that could actually stop all of this. Yeah, <laughs> And uh, I reminded myself of Capablanca and his little combinations. And there are actually two really nice little combinations hidden here. I played knight d6. And the knight, of course, wants to get to e4, the central square. Uh, and now, uh, what's more important even, the, the two uh, blacks' ideas are stopped. After bishop g5, I have rook g7 and knight f7, obviously. That'll hurt. Yeah. But after rook d8, it's even more interesting. Yeah, white goes knight e4. Oh. Yeah, and you get a full knight. So a little bit of domination, a little bit of prophylaxis, and we are stabilizing the advantage. Which is so, actually pretty interesting because, I, uh, yes, you are aware if you look at those moves, but they are a little hidden. So it's nice that you pointed this out right now with the knight. <laughs> yeah, so knight e6 comes to e4, uh, and black plays bishop e5, and one goes knight e4, and now you can see this is the typical octopus, right? Mm -hmm. Having eight central squares all around, that's just fantastic. And the black already has no approach to these uh, e3 and h6 uh, pawns, which were a little bit vulnerable. Now we have stabilized the advantage. Mm -hmm. But OK, uh, Jan, of course, being a strong <laughs> fighter, doesn't give up at all. He wants to go from behind. So we are stopping that. It's always nice, and it's the Karpov kind of playing. Yeah, just You just keep the... The, the the domination, you just uh, uh, make sure that your opponent is not getting the counter chances and you let him s boil and stew a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how much of a cook you are, but uh, yeah, many of the recipes, they, they need the, 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 the soft boiling for several hours. Yeah. <laughs> ramen, yeah, so we are making some ramen here. Bishop b5, white goes rook c6, and now already we, you see that white is, is, is getting one of these pawns, perhaps. And um, Jan played uh, rook f5, and his idea is, I want this pawn, pawn yeah? Uh, so I took, and after rook h5, this was move 30. I had like maybe 30 seconds for the move or so. Oof. And we have um, another another interesting moment because mm -hmm. after dominating the bishop, the knight will dominate the rook now. Yeah, because the rook has its uh, problems now. Okay, we want to take here, yeah, but the rook also has to 
take care of the of the bishop at the moment. Anna, give me please uh, uh, several seconds of rest. What would you play? <laughs> well, if you you already gave the hint, so I assume it is uh, the knight going back to f2, which can then go to g4 and uh, do the job, maybe. Yeah, that's 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 really that's really interesting. Maybe that's that's oh. a good thing. But after knight <laughs> f2, maybe bishop h2 is a problem for a second. Okay, okay. So I went for something a little bit more forcing. I played g4, but the idea is definitely correct. After yes. g4, black cannot take immediately because I take on e5. So first the check is needed. King g2, rook h6. And now, of course, many players, many young players especially, would just take the material. But three against two, you can play it forever, yeah? Really, you know, if you want to 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 channel Petrosian or someone, yeah, Petrosian <laughs> would never do that. Yeah, he would uh, he would he would go for some kind of very very safe domination. So where do we need our knight so that the rook cannot get out? There is a nice square f3. If we get the knight to f3, mm -hmm. the rook will not be able to get to h4 or to h2. King is covering the other uh, two white uh, squares, and uh, the the g4 pawn does the job. So that knight g5, brutal. king f8, knight f3, bishop c7, and now it's time to have a little snack. <laughs> Rook a6, and as you can see, the knight, after dominating the bishop on e4, dominates the rook on f3. Yeah, that's a knight. Uh, what 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 was such a such a uh, famous knight in the history? Bukefalos, maybe. <laughs> that's what, that's I would... Alexander the Great had the knight, yeah, that uh, the, the the horse Bukefalos, perhaps. So that's him. <laughs> uh, King is seven, and yeah, and now Black is uh, just completely tied down to the last knot, so White can just you know enjoy. So I played e4, Bishop <laughs> f4, e5. I think that Jan hoped that he can go g5 here, but unfortunately. Uh, the 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 link between the bishop and the rook is of course uh, stopped <laughs> after g5, so I can take the rook. Uh, so he played king f7, but of course that's an oversight because there's a check and uh, black loses the bishop. And, so yeah. Jan gave up, and uh, because he's such a great chess player and also a very uh, likable guy, uh, that's why I, I I like this 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 end game very much. Uh, it's not an everyday thing to to win with Jan Gustafsson, of course. Definitely, and not, no. also as you can see, it it has like study like contours, uh, more or less. Yeah, totally. It's yeah, interesting uh, how the knight was able to dominate both both pieces uh, in this end game. Love it. Yes, 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 yes. This and much, much more in the future from Jan Markus. Thank you so, so much. It was very, very enjoyable. Um, looking forward to even more Fritz trainers in the future and more Chess Magazine stuff and more books, of course. Thank you much for the invitation.